establishing a national network of parent infant psychotherapeutic support services for families and their newborn babies through a new charity, PIP UK. We in the Treasury work closely with DFID on international issues, including on international remittances, <coughs> and more on that later. But today, I want to talk about the wide-ranging work we've been doing here in the UK in the Treasury. And I want to give us all a challenge, for although we've made real progress in a number of areas, I would argue that the huge technological changes we're seeing year on year have the potential to usher in a new era of financial inclusion. <coughs> Green Maxima encourages universal access for individuals and enterprises at a reasonable cost to a wide range of financial services provided by diverse, responsible and sustainable institutions in education. Your Majesty. Good morning. Your Grace, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to be here today. I'm very sorry for my delay, but I'm flying in the morning is a risk like his financial risk sometimes. Um, the City of London is one of the world's leading financial hubs. What happens here really has an impact that extends far beyond the boundaries of the UK and Europe. So it is really of great significance that you place financial inclusion at the heart of economic development and equitable growth and at the heart of this conference. We share a common goal, therefore it is really a pleasure for me to be here with you today. It is important that these efforts continue to be supported at all levels so that we can establish an environment that is even more conducive to deepen financial inclusion around the world. So what are the next moves forwards that we need to see over the coming 10 to 15 years? I would say that the next move forward in financial inclusion will be driven by innovation, led by the private sector in partnership with many, many other stakeholders. All these innovations offer opportunities to scale up financial services through existing and new channels. Last year, I visited Peru, Colombia, India and China as part of my work as the Secretary General Special Advocate. I was able to talk with a wide range of private and public sector representatives about the tremendous efforts underway to bring households and businesses into the formal financial system. Countries like Colombia, India, and China have proven themselves successful at substantially reducing poverty. In fact, in China, efforts to bring households and businesses into the formal financial system have contributed enormously to the country's economic rise and to the welfare and well being of the Chinese people. <coughs> also, now in India, the new regulations making a payment bank possible offers great opportunities to include 650 million people that are now excluded from the form of financial services. However, efforts to further advance inclusive finance in the years to come will face a number of challenges. One will be to ensure that regulators are able to keep up with these innovations. It, is, it will be equally important to make certain that increases in access to form of financial services are accompanied by appropriate measures to protect consumers and to prevent fraud. <coughs> 